You know why DJI is probably one of the best camera companies in the world? It's because they think about the future. And when I say they think about the future, they think about you. Now, what the hell am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about the Ronin 4D, which is a camera that is really thought from the ground up for cinematographers. Not a lot of people understand this camera, but I do, and I really like it, and I think it's revolutionary. Now, when I say they think about the future, they thought this camera from the ground up to be upgradable. Right now, I have the 6K sensor on it, but if I wanna upgrade the sensor, I can, and now it's possible because they have a brand new sensor. Here, in this box, is their brand new 8K sensor, which is super simple to upgrade to. Let me show you. You take it out from the box and it comes with the gimbal and it looks like this. Super simple, super small and super easy to upgrade. Now let me show you how easy it is. It's like changing a lens. I haven't seen anything like this ever. Check it out. So I have here the 6K version. I just untighten this. There is a knob here. You just press it, you take it out, you take your new camera and you put it in, bam. In just a matter of seconds, you are now upgraded to the AK sensor. Now, let's put this camera to the test because its specs are really incredible. I'm talking about AK 70 frames per second, 4K 120, better noise performance and so much more. Let the test begin. Uh, I've been going hard from the night into the daylight. Telling them all that yesterday's price is not the same price. Eating up what's for breakfast, I can tell you what it tastes like. Wake up and I see red and I still don't got no brake lights. Yeah, feeling super fly. I look in the mirror, see ambition in my eyes. Got more than one formula, they love the way I drive. Yeah, I've been surprised, there's no need to be surprised. Baby, I'm a go-getter, go-getter Yeah, you better go figure, go figure Baby, I'm a go-getter, go-getter Yeah, you better go figure, go figure Try and get a big stack in my bag Boy, you know I'm getting to it, it's like that Try and get a big stack in my bag Yeah, you know I'm getting to it, it's like that, like that Baby, I'm a go-getter, go-getter yeah, you better go figure, go figure Baby, I'm a go-getter, go-getter Yeah, you better go figure, go figure Try and get a big stack in my bag Boy, you know I'm getting to it, it's like that Try and get a big stack in my bag Yeah, you know I'm getting to it, it's like that, like that Try and get a big stack in my bag Boy, you know I'm getting to it, it's like that, like Big stack, big, big stack in my bag You know I'm getting to it, getting to it, like that, like Alright, let me know what you think about the footage coming out of the Ronin for the 8K. Right now I'm filming on it and as you can see it has auto tracking, which is super nice because you can film yourself much easier. Now I'm really curious to see what you guys think about the first footage that we shot. Now first of all I want to say that we shot everything on the 70 to 28 T3, which is a DJI lens, and I think this lens is super sharp, looks really good, but it's only 17 to 28, which is am amazing for what it does. But I want to test out with different lenses, like a 35 millimeter, a 50 millimeter, and see how the camera looks, because these are the lenses that I normally use. Having experience with the DJI Ronin for the 6K, I can see that this camera already has some improvements, like cleaner. Uh, shadows, better noise performance, and really good frame rates. Now, by the time I filmed the first shots, I didn't have the ProRes RAW unlocked, so now I have it unlocked, so you're gonna see some ProRes RAW footage in a bit. So let's slap on a 35 millimeter and see what this camera can do.
Alright, so what do you think about the footage from the outside as well? I'm gonna give you a hint. It was getting kind of dark and quite late in the day and therefore I was really impressed on how good the footage looked. It didn't look mushy. It was that time of the day where some of the cameras that I've shot with would generate a mushy image but this one looked really good. Now I've shot everything in ProRes RAW and I've used a 35 millimeter lens that wasn't calibrated for the camera. So I only slapped the lens. I saw that the autofocus was working, but I had to auto calibrate the lens because as you saw, there were some shots that weren't in focus. Now, even so, the camera performed really good, but if I were to calibrate it, it would perform much better. And I actually got better results with a different lens that I auto calibrated before shooting, which I'm gonna get to that in a little bit. But what I wanna say is that I shot everything in ProRes RAW. And when I got back to the computer, started editing, I realized DaVinci Resolve doesn't support ProRes RAW. So I had to find a solution to actually uh, use this shot therefore there is a software that converts your ProRes raw footage into a raw dng files but it didn't work because this camera is way too new by the way i'm shooting on the camera right now so if the footage looks amazing it's because of that i wanted to see how this camera looks in the night as well so i took my 50 millimeter f 1.2 and i put it on this camera i balanced it it balances okay so you can use that lens without no worries and i took it outside at the christmas fair and oh boy oh boy the footage is absolutely insane when it was me and you every time i meet somebody new it's like they show Alright, so let me know what you think about the footage from the Christmas fair. Doesn't that look absolutely amazing? Like, there is almost no noise. Because this is an AK camera, the, the noise is very, like, small and it looks like grain. So it doesn't look like bad, ugly digital noise. Because I was so curious on how this camera looks, I also put on a 35mm anamorphic lens on it to see exactly how it looks and what's the image and let's see the footage. So let's talk a little bit about the anamorphic footage. Now one thing that is pretty interesting was the fact that we have this beautiful 8K sensor that makes pretty much any shot look cinematic. But when you put an anamorphic lens on it, it looks even better. Now the thing that is super interesting was the fact that the anamorphic lens is not as sharp as you would like on a 4K sensor. But when you put it on an 8K sensor, it creates this beautiful balance between a not so sharp lens and a really sharp sensor that combined, it transforms into a really beautiful image, which I think it's really cool. Now, another point that I wanna make is the fact that the anamorphic lens didn't have autofocus, but with the help of the LiDAR system, I was able to calibrate the lens in order to have autofocus which worked really good 
Now, one point that I want to make is that I feel like every shot that I made with this camera looks cinematic. I don't know why, it's maybe because of the 8K sensor, but I tried it even with no lights. Like for example, in my apartment, in my bedroom, I opened only a practical light and I tried to film a shot like that and it looked absolutely amazing. Without any lights, with, with nothing. Now I opened the TV and I tried the simil a similar shot and it also looked really cinematic. Which leads me to believe that because of the 8K sensor, the noise, the grain and everything that this camera has, because of such high quality, it gets compressed because it, it, the noise is smaller and it makes your image much cleaner and much easier to film in uncontrolled situations and situations where with a normal 4K camera you would get noise and bad looking image. But with this one, because the noise is so small on an AK sensor, everything looks much better. Because I really like this camera, I wanted to compare it with a camera that I use daily and I really like, and that's the Sony FX6. So I filmed the same shot and I put both of the shots side by side, and I started to zoom into the shots and see what's the big difference with the 8K. And as you can see, the Ronin 4D 8K holds the details really good even after you zoom quite a lot into the image, which is something that can be very helpful whenever you film an interview or whenever you have the need to zoom in into your image. Now, this is one of the things that I really wished for. I really wanted an 8K camera because I film a lot of social media stuff and I have to crop for vertical. But when I crop for vertical from a 4K camera, things kind of start to fall apart and the image looks um, way worse than if I would shoot vertical from the start. But with this camera, because it's an 8K camera, whenever you kind of crop for vertical, it still looks very good because you have a lot of pixels. I wanted to see how good this camera is on low light as well. So I compared it with the FX6 and it's not really a fair comparison because the Sony FX6 has 12,800 ISO and this one has only 4,000, but the difference was not that big. I was quite impressed to see how good this camera handles low light compared with the FX6, which as we know, it's one of the best cameras in low light. Now, because it's an AK sensor, the noise is quite small. So when you go higher in ISO, you're not gonna have that ugly grain or ugly electronic noise. You're gonna have like a more beautiful grain looking noise. Now, because we managed to compare the running for the 8K with the Sony FX6, and we kind of seen a little bit of a difference in terms of image quality and overall performance, I wanna see exactly how it compares with its old predecessor, like the Ronin 4D 6K. Now, I've used the Ronin 4D 6K quite a lot and I was really happy with the camera, but this one, the new one, it's actually taking this camera to new heights. And what I mean by that is that all of the limitations that I felt that I have with the Ronin 4D 6K are now gone with this new AK sensor. Now, what I mean by that is the fact that now I can record in higher frame rate options without needing to crop on the sensor to do so. You see, the Ronin 4D 6K, in order to get 4K 120, you had to crop your sensor down to a Super 35 mode, which meant that you kind of have to restructure the way you film these shots because the lens that you initially put on the camera will no longer have the same focal length because now you cropped to an S35 sensor and so on. So it has some limitations. Of course, it's great to have higher frame rate options even with the cost of cropping down your sensor, but it's nice to not be limited if you wanna do higher frame rate options. And this limitation is now gone on the 8K sensor because now you can film 8K up to 75 frames per second with a little bit of vertical crop or an 8K 60 frames per second without any crop at all. Now, if we go down in resolution, 4K, we can do 4K 120 again with no crop at all, 
which is amazing because now you can use this camera to its maximum potential. Of course, you have Super 35 modes as well, which is super helpful to have if you have Super 35 lenses that you wanna put on this camera. Of course, there are other differences between those two cameras, and I'm gonna put right now a chart here so you can see exactly all of the differences between those two cameras, but I'm also gonna do a side-by-side -side quick test with them, so I'm gonna put them side-by-side -side and see exactly if there's a difference in image quality and dynamic range. Now, as you can see, there is a small difference in dynamic range between those two cameras. In terms of color, they look the same, they look very beautiful, they share the same color science, and overall they look both amazing. But when it comes to dynamic range, I tried to break one or the other, and as you can see, the 6K broke faster with the same values, the same ISO, the same aperture, the 6K didn't hold my lighting going that much. So uh, it's really interesting to see exactly how these two cameras perform. And with all this being said, I really hope you enjoyed this uh, short review, which actually turned out quite long of the new Ronit for the 8K. I'm not gonna stop here. I'm gonna do another video where I'm gonna go more in depth in the menu system of this camera. And uh, we're gonna actually take a look at all of these benefits. So if you guys have any questions regarding this camera, now is the time to ask, drop them in the comments and on my next video, I'm gonna be sure to make a video answering all your questions and going through the menus and checking everything up. And by the way, did you know that this camera has the most ND filters ever on a camera? So it has nine stops of ND filter which is actually a new record, which is quite crazy. Uh, like for example, FX6 has seven stops and this one has nine, which is not bad, not bad. But until next time, I'm Alexander Don. Thanks all for watching. I hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that subscribe button. And until next time, I cannot wait to see you and create some epic content together. Peace.